Yes. Okay. Uh, so my name is Alexander. I'm a software engineer. And today I'm going to tell you a bit about performance. And first of all, where you may encounter uh, with the performance issues, what types of operations, and uh, then uh, on, uh, I am going to show you some examples in code and database with optimizations, depending on, on my experience. And uh, during my career, I had a number of tickets regarding performance and two main things that you should know that first uh, one that most of them were found on the production end, not on the other one. And the second that most, uh, or, or at least a half of them uh, could be avoided on the development stage. Uh, so why on the production? When you begin your project, you have uh, the for, for environments dev when you record, then test and stage for testing and production where real users uh, are using your product. And uh, on the start, you have the same empty database with the same schema, but after some time, you may found that some tables have uh, a million records and uh, it's uh, really different from the other one because every day uh, hundreds of users uh, use your database, your environment and create new and new records. Uh, so that's uh, one reason that first is a huge database size, it contains so many records. And the second one that simultaneously different users uh, using your application. And uh, to, to find uh, the performance issues on the earlier stages, for example, on the, during the test, uh, you may uh, copy your database to other ends, but not just copy, because uh, your production database contains the uh, real user's data, uh, which are protected by law and you can just simply copy it. So using replication, you can uh, copy the database and uh, change the real data to some generated. Therefore, the amount of data will be the same, but the values would be different. That's how you may copy it to other ends and uh, the result would be the same on the all environment. Or oh, the second the tactic uh, is a performance testing. Uh, it uh, requires some uh, resources, some time because uh, using some tools and uh, you write script and uh, populate and, and test your features uh, on your development uh, environment. And therefore you can find the issues on early stage. Uh, in this approach, uh, you always need to uh, update scripts uh, for existing feature or for new features, uh, create new script, write a new code. Okay, and uh, we're talking about port. There are two operations. Yeah, one, the IO input output, which means it's a waiting time. So you send request to the database, a service, a file, and just wait till the uh, response. And this time uh, is the input output. For the second one, the CPU bound, uh, it's everything that relates to calculations, make some operation uh, for when you yeah, uh, service one wait, the service two calculate, do some operations yeah, in database. So that's uh, the second one approach and this two types. And uh, both of them, yeah, could could have uh, potential issues, but they are different. 
And uh, I want to show you some examples. Imagine that you work in cargo transportation company as a developer and some thing about this company, you have some offices in different cities and the users, uh, you have your workers inside and some uh, users, customers, you know, so people who want to send parcel from one city to another. Uh, they go to the office, yeah, give you the parcel and you pack them into boxes. And to, for example, once a day you have a car where you want to start, put these boxes. And uh, here yeah, is a feature you want to implement, attach uh, manually boxes to the truck. Yeah. Uh, so you have some worker who on the UI select the drop down boxes yeah, and uh, attach them to, to the car, some car, yeah, and then button attach. Under the hood, uh, you in this, some service one, yeah, you receive a request with uh, this truck, yeah, information and uh, boxes that you want to put. You, you have uh, also a database uh, and some service too. So you, you need to get the additional information for boxes here yeah, from service to and uh, do something uh, with, uh, with it. And then replace uh, this information to the database up update. And one uh, way how you could achieve it, you, so you have a method to attach boxes, you have this container or truck ID, it doesn't matter, and a collection of uh, your boxes ID, which already exist in the database. You decide to go one by one through all boxes and uh, do some operation. Uh, you find, firstly, you get it uh, from the database, yeah, attached uh, to the truck, get send a request to the second service, yeah, and uh, do some logic with it. But after that, you replace or update this box information database and uh, return the result. Uh, the issue here and, uh, with every for each, no, not for each, just uh, the issues in the loop, uh, so when you go through all items, yeah, and you have, for example, for 100 boxes, you send not one request, but uh, 100 to the database, to the service, which uh, can have uh, a load. And uh, if you have several workers in parallel, if, for example, 10, it would be not uh, 100 uh, requests, uh, 1,000. Uh, and either, even if you if the code inside is uh, pretty fast, you will be waiting until all these requests will be proceed. And uh, also, this may have an impact on your uh, service, your database, ne negative side. Uh, the another approach how you could uh, implement it you can uh, you you have a list of these boxes here yeah, so you at once uh, retrieve all in for all these uh, boxes yeah and also send request to your second service uh, with a collection and get a collection of result therefore you send only one. Uh, one one request instead of one hundred. Uh, then uh, the code operation are usually fast, so you can uh, then attach, do some logic here, and as well update uh, not one item, but update uh, multiple items at the same time in one transaction one operation, uh, which uh, will help you to reduce the uh, your 
wait on your uh, service database. Uh, so the, the from the business perspective, all the solutions are the same, but from performance side, the second one uh, significantly faster. When you uh, create a, a new logic, you need to think how it may impact your performance in future. Because uh, when you just created the first uh, one, yeah, you, pu you push it to the test, yeah, everything works correctly. But uh, after the issue may appear after a year of using when uh, some amount of data will be high. Yeah, so it's better to uh, think about it at the beginning. And uh, in this code, uh, we have uh, retrieving some information from the service. And uh, if this information is uh, static, for example, user came to the office, uh, then gave a parcel and nothing else uh, is changing there. You may add the uh, cache, cache yeah, to improve the performance. Uh, even more, but uh, this one could be like a trade-off. If you, when you configure a lifetime of your cache, because uh, it will take not a, a real data uh, from the database, but from cache, the previous one. So the first one request uh, will go directly to the database, the service, and then store it uh, in cache. Yeah, so it's, uh, that's how it works. Uh, with cache, the next, second, and third would go to cache, take the information really fast, and return back the result. The issue may be here. The issue here is uh, if you, the data updated in database, it uh, could be different from what uh, is store it in the cache. So you sh should uh, think uh, about a lifetime cache. It can be either in memory, so if you uh, rerun your service, it will disappear, the little information stored in there, or distributed, uh, it means in cloud, you store and uh, synchronized to you. Hybrid is, uh, combined way of both of them. So cache is uh, one way that you may think of also about performance. Uh, now let's uh, go to the database examples. Also, I have a simple uh, table items with three columns, ID name and address and the primary key for ID. And I generated a really high amount of data and want to execute a simple query. Select ID and address where a name equals some value. And I run this query and it takes eight seconds uh, to execute, which is uh, really slow. In execution plan, there's uh, a index scan operation, which means that uh, it goes through all uh, rows in the table uh, one by one and try to find uh, the, the needed items. Uh, and uh, even if the item is the first uh, row, the result would be the same because we don't have any restriction here. Like, like top one item, only one, and it goes through all full table. And we have a hint here that missing index for name. Uh, there's where our filtering located. And uh, one more thing about index is that uh, when you create a 
primary key, you already have a clustered index for this column. So we already have one, but not nothing about name. Uh, it goes and uh, let's. Uh, we, so the way we can improve this query is uh, to add index for, for this query. So I create a index uh, for column name and execute the same query. And the result, zero seconds, uh, which is uh, what I was expecting for such simple query. And in our execution plan, plan we can see that uh, we have index seek, which is fast uh, operation, and uh, key lookup. You may be wondering why we have a key lookup here if we already added index for name. Uh, that's because in our query, if we added index for name, uh, the, it has information for name. We already have index uh, for ID, but nothing about address. So it needs uh, an additional uh, flow to operation to find uh, this address. But as we can see, it's uh, fast comparing to the index span. It was in previous uh, slide. But we can improve uh, this e index even more and uh, combine these this, combine this two operations into a single. So I uh, change it a bit. We as well ha have an index for our name column, but include uh, address information which in the select state. If we run it uh, one more time, we see that we have all only index seek without uh, key lookup. And uh, this operation is fast. So uh, using indexes is uh, good practice when you have uh, uh, big tables. Of course, uh, uh, indexes doesn't change don't change any logic, but uh, only have uh, performance uh, changes. Uh, and uh, in some cases, it may have a negative impact because for every delete or update uh, operations, the indexes should be recalculated, and uh, this time. Uh, maybe in some uh, cases higher than the benefit from this index. So you also should uh, think wisely uh, when adding that. Okay, and uh, another example that I want to show. Uh, I have uh, four tables yeah, and uh, Two of them have uh, foreign keys to the remaining two. And uh, I want to select uh, some information uh, from this both table. Okay, uh, let's say that I, firstly I populated uh, the <laughs> table and one of these uh, foreign keys would be you no, know, one have value or the, or the, and second one, uh, as uh, now. And I want to find information uh, where both of uh, the tables yeah, are linked either by address ID or by number ID. So I select the information here yeah, from uh, I its items and then combine, it can be either inner join or left, right, outer join, it doesn't matter in this case. And uh, at join uh, with or. So I join with one column or by the, or the second one. Where I have some filtration, I want to retrieve the first, uh, the two rows that I have here. And uh, operation takes two seconds, but it can 
be even more. So I want also have it fast. And uh, in our execution plan, we see that uh, most of the time located in, in this uh, join, yeah, but uh, all, as well we have uh, index scan because for this example, we haven't added uh, any indexes yet. And uh, also index scan for the workers for this, to, to find these two columns. Um, we might try to add this index, yes. Uh, our SQL plan hints us with uh, include address ID and number ID. Uh, let's see what will it have. I create uh, three indexes, just one for the name column, including uh, these foreign keys, address ID and number ID. And uh, also for the second table, I added two indexes, the number ID and address ID, because it's two different operations. They, they can be combined into a single one. And uh, when I execute, the same uh, query. The result is still two seconds, which is uh, slow. Uh, instead of a scan, we have index seek, which is fast, yeah, cost zero percent. And but for some reasons, the query is still slow. Uh, most of the time, located in the join and uh, a bit of time in the scan. And that's the issue uh, with the uh, or join. So for some reasons, it's a limitation and SQL cannot select the proper indexes and uh, it choose a scan, which is uh, really slow, even if you have all necessary indexes. Uh, the, there, I guess, can be different approaches, uh, but the simple one is just to divide the square into two parts. Uh, first one we join by the address ID. Uh, or th there is a mistake here without or. Uh, and uh, the second one uh, we join by the number ID. But to the result zero seconds uh, in our query execution plan, uh, we may see that most of the time uh, it is in this uh, union all. Uh, we, we select this one, uh, the second one, uh, and uh, combine them. It's a merge uh, join. But in other uh, our parts, we have index uh, seek, which is uh, fast, like uh, zero seconds. Uh, so when, so you should be careful with uh, using this uh, or uh, or joins with uh, in, inside your query. It may. Uh, have a negative side effects, you know, negative performance in your code, in your application. And uh, yeah, so indexes uh, are really good. It's a simple approach uh, if you want to improve your Queries, yeah. So you should uh, also think about them, and uh, use uh, use them. Uh, okay, that's uh, all examples that I wanted to show you today.